Welcome to the Future of Venture Capital video. Today, we are going to be discussing about the opportunities in the venture capital market and why this industry is changing. What we know is that, of course, the venture capital model has been changing, has been evolving. The valuations of the companies has been changing. The way we support companies has been changing. And of course, internet has literally transformed entrepreneurship. And therefore, VCs have had to adapt. But as Com Kaufman Fellows um, described, disrupting the VC model needs, obviously, to be focused on how the VC will adapt to change. Today, there are two ways to invest in startups. There is direct investments and indirect investments. Direct investments, it's high risk, your low yield, long return, typically 27% IIR for the, for the most successful ones. Indirect investments, it's high risk, medium yield, and long return, typically 20% IIR. This offers only two options to invest in the VC market and to obviously allocate capital to the VC asset class. And it's worth noting that breakthrough companies are extremely hard to identify, which means that diversification here and risk taking are key to the success of VCs, which is why we believe that there is an alternative here that we're proposing to obviously invest indirectly and directly into this market. Let's take a look at the pain points first. The pain points are for limited partners, typically investing for VC funds, will have a lack of transparency, will experience sometimes poor returns, they will have a misaligned fee structure, the VC will make money even if they don't perform. And of course, as an LP, you have very limited contact, you have no real time engagement with the portfolio companies, which can be frustrating because most LPs have a lot of value to add to their portfolio companies. As angel investors, there are different issues. The lack of expertise is the most common one. We've, we're seeing a lot of angels finding it sexy to invest in technology startups, but this requires skills. We, they also experience a lack of liquidity. It takes about seven years plus in order to start to release um, the, the value of an investment, and sometimes it never happens, as we know, and most of the time it does not happen. Lack of deal flow, it's extremely time consuming, and then it's a full job to find the best companies. And of, of course, as an angel investor, diversification is king. The founder of Kiritsu Capital, Matt Lemel, recommends 48 portfolio companies in order to maximize the return and reduce the risk. Where do we sit in the entire macro environment? Where does the macro trend take us here? We obviously all hear about blockchain and how it will reinvent all industries, such as supply chain, such as, of course, um, the entire pharmaceutical industry, trust, it really truly changing the whole world. But what's the impact on the financial market? Projected tokenized market volume until 2027 represents about $24 trillion. It's only seven years from now, and it represents an opportunity of $24 trillion. Of course, it will take time, but what's worth noting here is that even if we tokenize 10% of the entire financial ecosystem, that liquidity that we are going to be creating it will open new industries, it will open new returns and new ways to have access to different asset class. With that in mind, we have created Consilience Ventures. What we wanted to create is an ecosystem where all of the stakeholders are aligned for the sake of building great companies, for the sake of, of solving big problems. But we're creating a technology platform which is bringing together vetted startups, skilled professionals, and expert service providers. Altogether, they are participating into a private ecosystem which is essentially all about aligning the interest of this ecosystem, finding the best companies, enabling those best those companies to outperform and then drive bigger returns to everybody in the long in the long term. 
This creates new ways to investing in startups and certainly new ways to accelerate startups because we know that picking the companies, it's only part of the battle. Enabling the companies to grow and providing expertise along the way, it's much more critical. And certainly, most importantly, we are preparing the grounds where we hope that we can help large institutional investors to come into the VC market. So Consilience Ventures is all about aligning the risks and the rewards of everybody here. This ecosystem brings startups, experts, and investors all together. It's backed by its own technology, which is going to be roughly a marketplace with its own security token. We're creating this resource of exchange, that security token called CBDS, is traded for cash, equity, and expertise. It becomes the currency. But we're creating a collective reward system here, which is effectively by bringing the mother company into Consilience Ventures as well, which means that everybody benefits from the mother company of Consilience Ventures. So what is the resource exchange all about? At first, the startups issue the shares to Consilience Ventures in exchange of that security token at equal value. Therefore, the startup receives, say, one million pounds worth of CVDS and can use this one million pounds for exchanging against capital or exchanging against services. And that's really much what it is. The startups are benefiting from a one-stop shop where they get to buy all of the expertise they need and then have access to the capital they need from one single marketplace. The experts get to work for a share, a CVDS, Consilience Ventures Digital Security Token. And this is changing the whole dynamic because for the first time, experts can invest their time without paying, without being paid in sweat equity which is changing the whole dynamic because as we know, there are some really, really good experts here who are way too expensive to be paid in cash and yet they do not want to take sweat equity because it doesn't work. So working for sweat equity for them is much more flexible. And of course, as investors, as I'm trying to build a portfolio here and I'm trying to get diversification, transparency and something more fungible, I can buy into the CBDS, into the security token and therefore, I'm fully aligned with my experts in the ecosystem and I can get to obviously invest more if I want or sell if I want to as well. So aligning everybody is also about adding value for the entire life cycle. At first, we're bringing our investors and experts to pick the best companies. Second, we are introducing our experts to find the gaps into, in those companies. Where do they need? Do they need marketing support? Do they, go, they, they need finance support? Do they need board um, support? Do they need some executive search support? And so on and so forth. And by finding this, then we are de-risking the business because we often find that investing money into startups is only part of the battle because the other part is to find the talents that are going to be working for the company. But then once, once we have identified the gaps, we are essentially looking at bringing an amount of CVDS on the table for the startups. So as an example, the startup is looking for a million pounds, they can then look at how much capital they've raised from other VCs. And then if there's 200K, 300K left on the table in the round, Consilience Ventures can come in and take this part. We can do that and we can provide cash and expertise to help the portfolio company to grow. And at the end, once the Consilience Ventures network has been working for the companies for a little while, we have a great interest in continuously supporting those businesses throughout their entire life cycle. What does it mean for investors? Why is it important to have a platform where I can customize my portfolio? Well, essentially, customization here represents an opportunity to invest in the security token and get exposure to a whole portfolio of very, very diversified companies. It's sector agnostic, stage agnostic. 
I can also invest in sector specific startups. I can be a, an investor in consilience ventures and decide to invest in fintech companies only directly if I want to. I can build a portfolio. Or I can only pick to invest in individual company. If I am trying to get exposure to different sectors, I can do it too. I can invest in one startup in fintech, one startup in biotech, one startup in IoT, one startup in, one startup in cybersecurity. I decide. It's basically bringing mass customization for investors. What are the advantages? As a recap, we know that investing in tech startups requires expertise, which are often uh, underestimated. And doing due diligence and able to identify the strength and the weaknesses of those businesses is extremely hard. We know that the alternative to this is obviously to go and work with a VC, but it's expensive. And we know that those VCs, for the best ones, they are very, very hard to get into. They won't take your money or they will charge you a lot of money for it. Now, of course, creating a portfolio in startup requires diversification. And if even a VC will typically create a portfolio of 30 to 50 companies max, which may not be enough in certain circumstances. Some VCs are really well at doing this, some others are not. Which is why Consilience Ventures is proposing to build a portfolio of 1,000 companies over the next 10 years. But that security token obviously opens a Pandora box here because we offer more liquidity, more transparency, and it's data driven. So for us, it's all about augmenting the benefits of every single part in the whole. Consilience Ventures ecosystem. And as I said, it also opens new opportunities because it represents co-investments and direct investments in Consilience Ventures. I hope this was useful. And again, this is just a proposition about how the ecosystem is evolving here. Consilience Ventures is live. We, are, we have already made lots of investments. We're very keen on hearing from you if you are interested in shaping up the next version of venture capital. Thank you very much. Goodbye.